Sixth grade, module two, lesson seven, classwork. Example one, model the following using a partitive interpretation. So the partitive interpretation would mean that we're gonna interpret this division problem as saying two fifths of what number is three fourths? So two fifths of what number is three-fourths. So let's draw a model and split it into fifths. And two-fifths of it is equal to three-fourths. So we want to know what would go into each of these two boxes because we know that two-fifths is equal to three-fourths so we need to split that in half. So we need to find half of three-fourths, which would be one-half times three-fourths, would be three-eighths. So each of these are three-eighths, which means that the rest of these are also three-eighths. So then we can find our final answer by doing three-eighths times five, which would get us fifteen-eighths, or one and seven eighths. So the, now we followed, we shaded the two sections, two fifths, and well, we didn't actually shade them, but we circled them. And we labeled the part that is known as three fourths, and then we solved. So now we need to make notes on the math sentences needed to solve this problem. So what we're gonna do is connect the model to a new method that we can use to quickly find um, the answer to division problems. So this is going to help us find the answers a lot faster. So we can record what we did. So first what we did is we found half of half of three-fourths, right? Or one-half times three-fourths. So that's what we did first. And then, after that, we multiplied it by 5. So we did everything that we did involved multiplication. We didn't actually need to divide anything. So if we want to simplify that a little bit, we can say that what we did was 3 fourths divided by 2 fifths was equal to what we did was 1 half times 3 fourths and then we multiplied it by 5. Or we can change it around. Because of the commutative property, since we're using multiplication, we can move these factors around. So we could rearrange it to say 1 half times 3 fourths times 5. We don't necessarily need those in there. It would also be equal to 3 fourths times 1 half times 5. Which then, if we had 1 half times 5, that's equal to 3 fourths times 5 halves. Hope you're still with me. So, since, so this is equal to that. So, our original problem was, three-fourths divided by two-fifths, and we found that it's equal to this right here, three-fourths times five-halves. Now, do you notice a similarity between those? So what happens, this is called the invert and multiply rule. So what happens is all you need to do is take the divisor, the divisor being the second number, second factor in a division equation, so take the divisor and flip it. So inverting means to flip it. So we took two-fifths and turned that into five-halves. So we inverted, and then we just multiply times three-fourths. And we get eight, or sorry, not three. We didn't add. We were multiplying. Three times five is 15, and four times two is eight, which is what we got, one and seven-eighths. So invert and multiply. Okay, let's do another example. So example number two, 
Model the following using a measurement interpretation. So remember, a measurement interpretation for 3 fifths divided by 1 fourth is saying that 3 fifths is how many fourths? So let's draw a model. So 3 fifths is how many fourths? To do this, we would need to find a common denominator. So three, let, we're going to use 20. 3 fifths is equal to 12 twentieths. So we're going to have 12 twentieths. So I'm going to split this into twentieths. And if we have 12 twentieths, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here's 12 twentieths right here. And we want to know how many fourths are in there. So let's change 1 fourth into twentieths times 5 would be 5 twentieths. So let's find groups of 5 twentieths. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Two groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But only two of them, these two, were part of our original 12 twentieths. So that would be 2 out of 5. So we get 2 and 2 fifths. So let's um, look at this in the invert and multiply method. So what we could have done is inverted and multiplied. So 3 fifths times 1 fourth, I'm going to change that to 4 over 1. So we get 12 fifths, which would be equal to 2 and 2 fifths. So it's just a much faster way to getting to where we want to get. Example 3, 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths. So I'm going to use the partitive interpretation, and that would mean that we're going to be looking for 3 fourths of what number is 2 thirds. So I'll draw my model. And we want to know 3 fourths of what number is 2 thirds. So 3 fourths, we have 3 three-fourths of a number, and we know that it is two-thirds. So now we need to separate this into three equal pieces. So we're going to take two-thirds and find a third of it, because all, thir all three-thirds would add up to that whole. So we need to find one-third of two-thirds, or one-third times two-thirds, which is two-ninths. So each of these are two-ninths. So then this is also 2 ninths. So then finally, if we want to find what the whole number is, we just need to do 2 ninths times 4, and we will get 8 ninths. Show the number sentences below. So now what we're going to do is take our model up here and connect it to the invert and multiply um, method. So what we started with was 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths. And we found that that was equal to what our first step was 1 third of 2 thirds, which was 1 third times 2 thirds. And then we finished by multiplying by 4. So the commutative property lets us rearrange. So I'm going to rearrange this to 2 thirds times 1 third times 4, and I can easily multiply 1 third times 4 and get 4 thirds. So we get 2 thirds times 4 thirds, and that's equal to 2 thirds divided by 3 fourths, which shows us the invert and multiply, which means that we take the divisor, 3 fourths, and we flip it and just multiply instead.